Hey what is up everyone, I'm Agonix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in this tutorial today I'm going to be showing you guys how to allow your player to walk upstairs in your Godot game. So let's say for example you've created some stairs for your game and you have a collider for each individual step. Well what you'll notice is that when you actually go to test it out, you most likely won't be able to walk up it. And the reason as to why is just because of how Godot's collision works. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how to actually stop this from happening. So then your player can actually walk up stairs. Now, right now our player can only jump up these stairs. Since these steps, they all each have their own individual collider attached to them. So yeah, there are a few different methods on how to stop this from happening. Now the first method is by just simply having one box collider, which is on an angle like a ramp. So basically, you know, you just have like a ramp collider for your stairs. So as you can see here, when I walk up the stairs, I can, you know, just simply walk up them. And the reason as to why is because I am just simply using a ramp collider, or just a box collider, which is angled like a ramp. So it does work pretty well, and also it's, you know, kind of better in a way, because, you know, there's only one collider, and there's not many colliders, you know, so, yeah, it takes up less stuff in your scene, you know, you're, you're using less nodes, so yeah. So using a ramp for the collision of the stairs is one way of solving the issue. However, there is another way of solving the issue which does involve coding. So let's say for example you don't want to use the ramp method. You know, you want to, you want to actually have the stairs be accurate with their collision. So you want each step to have their own collider. Well, there is a way to solve this and I will show you guys how to do that. First off, before I do anything, I did just want to quickly show you guys how I have that uh, stairs ramp collider set up. So here I have my uh, stairs ramp, as they're called here. They're just my ramp stairs, basically. So uh, as you can see here with these stairs, it's just one long collider, and it's shaped like a ramp. So it's just on an angle. And uh, yeah, so if you want to do stairs like this, just using one simple collider in the shape of a ramp, that is definitely one good way of doing it. It's very simple, and also there's just less nodes in your scene overall, so yeah. So with my other stairs, how I have them set up is, as you can see, I have a bunch of collision shape 3Ds in the scene underneath a static body 3D. And underneath those collision shapes is mesh instance 3Ds, which are just box meshes. So they each represent the steps of these stairs. So basically, uh, each step has their own collision shape, because we want these stairs to have accurate collision. So if you're someone who wants your stairs to have accurate collision, and you know you don't want to do the ramp method because you think it's too simple, well, let me show you guys how to actually walk up these stairs now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our player. So go to your player scene. And then with our player, what we're going to do is we're going to go right click, add child node, and then we want to search up area 3D. So now we're going to be adding an area 3D as a child of our player. So with your area 3D, you can rename this to a trigger if you want to, or even stairs trigger if you want to. I'm just going to rename it to stairs trigger. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on the stairs trigger. And I'm going to go add child node, and I'm going to add a collision shape 3D. So basically, what area 3Ds are, for those of you who don't know, is they're basically just like triggers, and by adding a collision shape 3D to the trigger, we're adding a shape to the trigger. And then where it says shape empty, you just then want to, you know, choose a shape. So I'm just going to select the box shape 3D. And then I recommend positioning this sort of downwards you know, towards the bottom of your player. And also make sure that your area 3D is not that big as well. You know, make sure that it's as small as it can possibly be. And uh, yeah, just make sure that it's as big as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be big or anything, you know, like as you can see here, I've just got mine, you know, very tiny, just, you know, tightly wrapping around the player. So yeah, that's all you really need to do with this. It doesn't need to be anything, you know, big or anything like that. 
So now that we have our trigger set up, what we're going to do is make sure that you have your uh, Area 3D selected. And where it says Script Empty, you want to click on this, go New Script. And now, if you don't have a scripts folder in your scene already, I do recommend that you do create a scripts folder. Just click on the little folder icon here. And then you can click on the folder icon with the green plus icon here to create a new folder. Now, I've already got a scripts folder, so I'm just going to create it in here. So after you set up the path to your script, now what you can do is you can just simply go press create. And boom, so now here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these two basic functions. We won't be needing these. And what we're going to do is we're going to write func enter trigger. So we're going to be creating our own function called enter trigger. And then in the parentheses, you want to write body. And then we're going to do the two dots. So if something enters this trigger, um, basically the what the body is going to be is that is going to be the thing that enters the trigger. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write if stairs, so you want to do this in quotation marks as well, you want to write if stairs in body.name. So what we're checking for here is if the collider that enters our trigger has stairs in its name, what we're going to be doing is, oh, and I forgot as well, we need to actually create a variable above our function, so just go like a line or two above your function, and then write var, and then write stairs equals zero. And then what we're going to do here is uh, underneath if stairs in body.name, where we check if stairs is in the name of the collider that enters our trigger, what's going to happen is stairs plus equals one. So basically what the, stair, what the stairs variable is here, is this going to check how many stairs are actually colliding with our player? So basically whenever stairs enter our trigger, they will get added to this little, uh, little variable here. So basically the stairs variable will be plussing onto itself. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to copy this entire function, then we're going to paste it below. And then we need to change enter to exit, and then change plus to minus. So now what's happening is whenever stairs exit our trigger, they will be getting removed from the variable here. So basically, yeah, this variable is checking how much stairs our player is colliding with. If it equals to zero, then that means that our player can't walk up the stairs anymore. However, if it is over zero, then our player can walk up stairs. Alright, so now that we have the code here done, what we're going to do is you want to make sure that you have your stairs trigger selected, make sure you have your area 3D selected. Then in the inspector menu, you want to switch over to the node tab here. And again, make sure you have your stairs trigger selected. And then you will see all this stuff pop up here. So where it says body entered, uh, you want to click on this, double click. And then you want to make sure that you have your area 3D selected since we're connecting from it. And then with the receiver method, with the uh, body entered thing here, you want to enter in the method that you're using in your script for entering the trigger. So what we're going to type in here for receiver method is we're going to type in enter trigger or just whatever your enter trigger functions name is. And then we're going to go connect and boom. So how you'll know you did it right is when in your script, you now have this little green icon next to your function. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is we're going to now double click on the body exited signal here. And then we're going to select our area 3D again, and then we're going to write exit trigger, since this is the function that is used for exiting the trigger. Then we're going to connect it, and boom. So now we have both of our signals connected. We have the body entered signal connected it to our enter trigger function. Then we have our body exited signal connected up to our exit trigger function. So yeah, so make sure that you get them signals connected up to those functions. And then now uh, your area 3D will all be ready to go. So just to recap what the script does here, just for anyone who needs an extra explanation. So here we have a variable called stairs and this will equal to zero. So then we have our enter trigger function, and in the parentheses here we have the body, and this is going to be whatever collider ends up colliding with our area 3D. So that's what body is, it's just whatever collider uh, interacts with our area 3D here. 
and then if stairs is in the name of our a collider's name, so the collider that enters the trigger, if stairs is in its name, then stairs, the stairs variable here, will plus onto itself by one. And then we have our exit trigger function where if the collider with stairs in its name exits the trigger, then stairs will minus one from itself. So yeah. Alright, so now that we're done doing the scripting for our area 3D, what you want to do now is you want to actually go to your player script, and whatever code you're using for your player's movement, just go down to whatever, you know, part of your script you're using for your player's movement. So for me, it's just uh, this part right here. So if direction just basically means if our player is moving. So I'm going to go down a line underneath if direction. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to write dollar sign and then stairs trigger. And the reason as to why I'm able to do this is because the stairs trigger is a direct child of my player, which my, uh, you know, my player script is attached to the uh, player parent node here. And since that is a direct child, the stairs trigger is a direct child of my player, I can just simply access it by doing a dollar sign and then writing stairs trigger. So yeah, you guys can do that as well. Just enter in the name of your area 3D. If yours is called stairs trigger just like mine, then you'd write dollar sign stairs trigger. So then what we're going to do is we're going to write if out the front of it. So if stairs trigger, and then you want to write dot stairs, and then over zero. What we're going to do here is we're then going to write velocity dot y equals one. So let me explain what's going on here. So when our player is moving, so if direction, what will happen is if the stairs trigger stairs variable is over zero, so if there are stairs colliding with our area 3D, then what will happen is whenever our, whenever our player moves, the velocity dot y will go up by one. So basically our player will be moving up in the air a bit in order to allow them to actually walk up the stairs. So you can set this value to whatever you want to, by the way, you can set it to 1, 2, you know, whatever works best for you, of course. I think that 1 would work best for most people, since, you know, anything higher can be a bit too much. It almost uh, looks like your player's jumping a bit, but yeah. So if I'm not forgetting anything, I think this should be pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it. Just this stairs trigger here, and then the bit of code added on to the player script, and boom, we should be set to go. So now our player... Is ready to actually walk up uh, actual stairs with accurate stairs collision so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to our level script and now we're gonna try walking up these stairs here that we were having trouble walking up earlier so let's go test out the scene and here we go so boom as you can see now I'm actually able to walk up the stairs without having to jump at all so yeah as you can see, it all works pretty good. I'm just able to simply walk up the stairs. And yeah. So if this tutorial helped you guys out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Be sure to let me know what method you like best. Do you personally like the ramp method more? Because it's a lot easier and doesn't require any coding. Or do you prefer this method, which allows you to actually have the accurate stairs collision that you want? Uh, so yeah, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you like. Uh, overall, I do like this method. And yeah, so when your player is no longer actually colliding with the stairs, uh, your player won't go up anymore. So yeah, and your player will only go up when you're actually uh, moving as well. Alright guys, I'll see you all next time, and bye bye